Well, welcome and uh, Merry Christmas to you all and from all of us at Hope Church. Um, you're really welcome here and you're welcome too if you're joining or watching in on Facebook or YouTube. Welcome to our evening carol service as well. My, My name is Andy Mills. I'm one of the leaders here if we haven't met before. And you'll see a few other people who belong to Hope Church coming up this evening and um, to read or to play music for us. And they're all people who really believe and love the words that they're reading to you. Um, and do feel free to ask any of us afterwards about anything that you've heard or any questions that you have about what we've said this evening, or do get in touch through Facebook as well. Well, it's easy for us to have a good moan about what Christmas has become, hasn't it? We can complain about how it's been commercialised, how much money is spent and wasted at Christmas, how much stress it can cause. But, you know, even in the TV adverts, in the Christmas TV adverts that are are made to get us to spend more money. Even in there, we can often find something true about Christmas. There's usually something good, something true, something beautiful that helps us to see what Christmas is all about. See if you can spot it in this advert now. The little boy in that advert, Nathan, is showing this alien Christmas for her first time. She's no idea what Christmas is about. So he takes her around a tour of Christmas, a guided tour, showing her mince pies and how to eat them, showing her Christmas lights and Christmas movies and everything that he wants to tell her about Christmas. John Lewis wants us to imagine seeing Christmas for the first time. And that's a great idea. So my friends, I'd love to invite you to see Christmas for the first time. Put yourself into the shoes of, of that alien who didn't know anything about Christmas and let the Bible tonight be like Nathan, that old boy, to us. Let these old words that we're going to read from the Bible, these old songs from carols that we're going to sing, take our hearts and minds on a guided tour of what Christmas is all about. The true story of Christmas. Let's listen and sing and think about that story, enjoying that story of Christmas, the beauty, the true heart that lies at what Christmas is all about. And then maybe even tonight, God will help us to see Christmas in a way that we've never seen it before. Christmas in the, through the eyes of the Bible, as if it was for the very first time. Let me pray for us as we start our time together. 
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, on that starry night over 2,000 years ago, you sent Jesus, your one and only Son, to shine into our dark world with the light of salvation. So my Father, we pray that you would lift our eyes to see his glory, fill our minds with his light, and give our hearts the joy of heaven through the Saviour who is born, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The rest of our service will go on unannounced. So if you're willing and able to stand when the music starts for the carols and then sit down when someone comes up for the readings. And then later on, Chris will come and give us a short talk uh, from the readings that we've had this evening. So hand over to the musicians for our first carol. Stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Saviour's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of the weary world rejoices for yonder place, a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh hear the angel voices, oh night divine. Oh, night when Christ was born. Oh, night, oh, holy night when Christ was born. to come as creature for the wonderful of the hay-scattered stone. Truth of the every creature he entered earth to reverse Adam's fall. In towering he laid aside his glory and in our place was sacrificed for sin. Fall on your knees, oh hear the gospel story. was born, oh, night, oh, holy night, when Christ was born. Lives within the manger with joyful shepherds proclaim him as let not the promised son remain a stranger in reverent worship make Christ your adore. 
eternal life is that who would receive him with grace and peace for their lives he will adore fall on your knees receive the gift of heaven oh no was born oh, night. Oh, 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 holy night when Christ was born oh, on your knees receive the gift of heaven, O oh, night divine, O oh, night Christ was born, O oh, night, O oh, 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 oh. first reading the words that the prophet Micah spoke about 700 years before Jesus was born. They promised where he'd be born and what he would do for the whole world. Micah chapter 5 verses 6 to 4. But you Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she, who is in labor, bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Peace to me. 
Our second reading are words from the prophet Isaiah, also about 700 years before Jesus was born, when God's people were about to go into captivity and slavery once again. They tell us of the joy that a baby's birth would bring to a dark and broken world, and how long his great kingdom would last. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor. Every warrior's boat used in battle and every garment rolled in wood will be destined for burning and will be fuel for the fire. For towards a child is born, towards the son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou day spring from on high, and cause thy light on us to rise. 
Disperse the gloomy clouds of night And death's dark shadow put to flight Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, true prophet of the Lord, and turn the key to heaven's door. Be thou our comforter and guide, and lead us to the Father's side. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall by his blood our darkness spell. O come, a great high priest, and intercede by sin. Luke wrote our next Bible reading. He was a doctor and a historian who researched the facts. He interviewed the eyewitnesses and he made sure that the big news that he was bringing wasn't fake. He tells us the news of Jesus' birth. So this is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20 from the Bible. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Now, this was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for him. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, 
vote for just as they have been told. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn Earth and mercy my old God and Rise, join the triumph of the sky. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in that we have. the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by Christ the everlasting Lord, great in time, behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. flesh the Godhead Even from being a baby, Jesus was hated by the people who should have loved him and loved by the outsiders and foreigners like you and me. Here's how his close friend Matthew picks up the story from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star and it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. And he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law. He asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod heard the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, 
Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another, by another route. And they tell us where he was and what happened when he came into the world as a baby. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life is the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was not in the world, 
and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born, not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. It was getting close to Christmas. And well, Danny was hoping for a new bike. But just to make sure, he, he thought, thought he'd, he'd bike a rare. Dear yeah, Jesus, he wrote, I've been a good boy this year and would appreciate a new bicycle. Signed, your friend, Danny. He read through his letter, but thought better of it, screwed it up and threw it in the bin. He gave his letter another try. Dear Jesus, I've been an okay boy this year and I want a new bicycle. Yours truly, Daniel. Truly? Danny knew that that wasn't true. So he tore it up and tried again. Dear Jesus, I've thought a lot about being a good boy this year. So may I have a new bicycle? Signed, Daniel. But even that was stretching the truth a little bit. So he screwed that up as well. And he wandered off around the house, looking for inspiration. Uh, Danny paused in front of the family nativity scene and looked at it for a while thoughtfully. Then he grabbed the small figure of Mary and ran back to his room. He stuffed her in a sock, and shoved her the back of his drawers. Then he sat down to write his next prayer. Dear Jesus, if you ever want to see your mother again, <laughs> I doubt any of us have attempted to blackmail Jesus this year, but I'm sure many of us have asked God for something this year. Maybe even tried to make some sort of bargain with him. Even if you're someone who wouldn't put yourself firmly in the box, smart Christian, you, you like the thought perhaps of speaking to God, whoever he is, uh, whatever he is like. Or perhaps actually this evening, if I were to put you on the spot, you'd be someone who is perhaps a bit more sceptical about this whole God and prayer thing. It's a nice idea that at one time in history, but we've moved on, we've grown up, and well, this carol service it's just a bit of nice nostalgia, isn't it? You see, after all, even if there was a God, who's to say what he, she, it is like? Let alone whether prayers get answered or not. I mean, how would you know? There was once a watchmaker whose shop window was full of clocks. And, and every morning, he would notice the same man pause outside his shop and, and stoop down to look at his clocks. And every day it went on, day after day, the same man. And so one day, he has curiously got the better of him, and the shopkeeper went out. When the man appeared, the watchmaker went to greet him. He said, may I ask you why you stop each day and look at my clocks? Well, yes, of course, replied the man. I work up at the shoe factory. And uh, one of my jobs is to ring the factory bell at five o'clock to mark the end of the shift. So every morning I walk past your shop on my way to work, I always set my watch by your clocks. Oh, that's terrible, said the man of the watchmaker shop, because I always set my clocks by the factory bell I always hear at five o'clock. 
every evening. You see, if you and I rely on each other to work out who or what God is, then we have a problem, don't we? Who's to say you or me is right? We'll be like the factory worker and the watchmaker. We might be a couple of minutes out. We might be several hours out. Who would know? But everything changes when we get a message from the outside. We don't need to set the clocks, do we, on our smartphones or computers these days? They receive the true message of the time from outside. But surely the same thing can't be said of God, can it? A message from the outside, a message of the truth about who God is. Imagine knowing something truly about where we came from. Imagine knowing truly something about who we are, what life is all about, where we're headed. What happens after we die? Just imagine a message from outside of us, a true message. That really would be life changing, wouldn't it? Which is why Christmas has been changing lives for the past 2,000 years, and why the events that very first Christmas continue to change lives today, because we have received, received a true, true message. message. From from the the outside. Outside. Just look again at the last verse we have read from John's Gospel. It's on your sheets on the screen there. This is, again, remember, from the beginning of one of the accounts of Jesus' life. And it's, it's all about this person called the Word. And the Word became flesh. And John and his friends, he, they saw his glory. And so we know that he's talking about Jesus here. But why is he called? The word. A little while back, I, I used to work backstage in a professional theatre, and I joined in the secret Santa for the pantomime season and the, the crew and the cast. So you know the kind of thing from Secret Santa, you, all your names go in a hat. You pick out someone else's name and you have to secretly buy them a present. And I got some random member of the panto cast. I, I just, I barely knew them. What on earth could I buy for them as a secret Santa present? I've not a clue. I'm rubbish at shopping as it is. Now having this extra hassle and hurdle of not actually knowing the person. Of course, I could have got to know them. I could have spoken with them. And they could have told me all the sorts of things they, they liked and they were interested in. But without those words, I was in the dark. And I simply had to guess what they might like and without words from god you and i we are in the dark we simply have to guess what he might be like but the god of the bible is and always has been a speaking god a promise making and a promise keeping kind of god no wonder he's called the word here god wants us to to know him Truly, God wants us to, to know ourselves truly. And so he has spoken. The problem is, we don't want to listen. We prefer the darkness. So God didn't just stop speaking his message to us. No, even more incredible than that, he became the message. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And that's why this Middle Eastern fisherman, John, could say, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son. But actually, John's not simply talking about Jesus' birth here. For the baby laid in the wooden feeding trough came to the that he might die on a wooden execution cross. And that's the real glory John saw. Remember, we haven't listened. We've preferred the darkness without God. But from the cross, Jesus offers each one of us a swap. That's the glory. A simple swap. Jesus says to us, he says, admit you're in the darkness. Face up to having not listened. 
And let me be the one who faces the consequences of all that in your place. And Jesus says, that, and I'll give you light and truth and hope and joy. I take your case. You take mine. That's the glorious swap that Jesus offers each one of us. That's the message he came. That's the message he became. And the question for each one of us is, are we listening? In a minute, we are going to sing our final carol this evening. But before we do that, there might be some, something from this evening, something we've sung, some words from the reading, something I've said that's made you think. And if that's, if that's you this evening, then we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you'll find near you a little welcome to Christmas card. Um, and you can let us know it's something that you'd like to tell us about the service this evening, something that struck you. If you want to stay in touch with us, fill it in and pop it in the box on the way out. But there is another way I encourage you to think about responding this evening. The perfect way to listen to the word become flesh. And that's to read about his life, to read what God has with you. If you've, if you've never, never read, read the gospel, the gospel stories, stories, then I'd love, love to give, give you a copy of Jesus' life. Just come and find me after the service. Come and ask me, and I'd love to give you a copy of Luke's gospel, which tells you all about Jesus' life. Well, thank you for listening. I'm going to pray for us now, and then we're going to sing our final carol. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent Jesus, the Word who became flesh, that we could see his glory. We could know truth about who you are and what we are like. And thank you for the glory of the cross, where Jesus swapped places with us so that we could have eternal life offered to us. And we pray this Christmas and for all our days, you would help us to not stay in the darkness, but to come into the light of Jesus, to listen to his word, and to know eternal life and your glory. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's great, yeah, I'd love to listen to your question, if that's all right. Should we sing our final carol and then, yeah, have, have, have a chat afterwards? That's great, thanks very much. Brilliant, should we sing our final carol this evening?
questions, time to talk afterwards, and um, Val and Steve are getting tea, coffee, mug wine and some snacks ready for us at the back, so do please stick around. And please join us here any Sunday at 10.30 for Christmas Day and for the next two Sundays for somewhere else, we're at the Scott Hut in Goldthorpe, but any other Sunday in the year, um, we hope to be here, and um, so we'd love you to come and join us as well, and pick up something from the desk at the back, there's the Luke's Gospels that Chris mentioned, where you can read a whole story of the life of Jesus. The last song was an invitation, wasn't it, to come and adore Jesus. And that's what being a Christian is about. Not about coming here at Christmas or on a Sunday. It's about coming and, and loving Jesus, adoring him through our whole lives. And that's what we're being invited to do through the story of Christmas. And um, so why don't you pick up one of these if you'd like to have a read of this and see if you want to come and adore Jesus. But let me pray for us as we close this time. Father, we thank you for Jesus, for the word that was with you in the beginning and the word that we have with us now to listen to today. Father, thank you that he came in all of his glory and came to die on a humble cross to deal with our sin and to bring us into light. Father, help us to remember him this Christmas and to remember these wonderful words that we've heard and sung tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Do head to the back whenever you like. And thanks for joining us online as well. <laughs> 